What's happening everyone? In this video we'll be continuing our series on algorithms by covering the binary search, a searching method that emulates the efficient lookup of a balanced binary search tree without having to maintain any complex data structure in memory. In the beginning of this lesson we'll cover the basics and underlying methodology of the binary search, and later we'll open up a coding editor and actually implement the algorithm using the Python coding language. Don't worry if you don't have much experience with Python, as it's definitely one of the most readable coding languages, and all the logic we use in this video will transfer over directly to an implementation in pretty much any other coding language. As always, like the video if you find it helpful or informative, and subscribe if you want to learn more computer science and Python coding principles in the future. So to start things off, the easiest way to motivate the idea behind binary search, in my opinion, is to compare it with a simpler searching approach. If you're provided with an array, such as the 10 length array on the right of the slide, and you want to check to see if a certain value is somewhere in the array, the first thing you'll likely think to do is simply to iterate over each element and check to see if the value at that index matches the value you're searching for. In the GIF on the right, as you can see, we're tasked with searching for the integer 33, so starting at the first element, we just iterate through all the elements until we've either reached the end of the array or we found integer 33. This method of searching is known as linear, or sequential search, and as you may have guessed, is not that efficient. In the worst case, so either if the element we're searching for is the last element, or not in the array at all, we need to iterate over every single element before we can come to a conclusion. In the average and worst cases, this means linear search has a linear, or big O of n, time complexity. For an array like the one on the slide, with just 10 elements, this is no big deal. But imagine if we had an array of length 1 billion. In this case, we would likely need to perform hundreds of millions of comparisons. Unfortunately, for an unsorted array like the one on the slide, the linear search is the only way and thus the fastest way we can search for a requested value. Of course, we're not completely stuck with linear search, or this video wouldn't exist. If we'd ever like to be able to perform a search in faster than linear time, we first need to alter our original array so that it's in sorted order. If this is the case, we can leave linear search behind and switch over to using the more efficient binary search. In many applications requiring search functionality, this is a no-brainer because we already maintain the elements in some sorted fashion. But if not, we'll first have to sort the array. Take note that if you're dealing with an unsorted array, it doesn't normally make sense to sort it, then use binary search over just using linear search, because you'll spend more time just sorting the array than you would searching with linear search. That is, unless you'll be performing multiple searches and can take advantage of the sorted array many times. In this case, sorting, then using binary search would make sense. So as you can see on the right, instead of checking each element sequentially, binary search follows a set of simple rules recursively to allow it to narrow down the search space significantly. On each iteration, binary search cuts the search space in half by comparing the middle value of the array to the value we're searching for. If the middle value is larger than our target, we discard all items to the right, effectively all the larger items, and if the middle value is smaller, we discard all items to the left, effectively all the smaller items. Using just the simple technique, binary search is able to reduce the average and worst case runtime performance from big O of n, like we had in linear search, to big O of log n. This means that for an array of length 1 billion, we would only need to perform a maximum of 29 steps versus 1 billion steps if we use linear search. This is an incredible performance boost and is the main reason binary search and its derivatives are used everywhere on computers today. On this side we can see a comparison between the search operation for a binary search tree and the binary search algorithm. As we alluded to in the beginning, the process behind binary search is nearly identical to the binary search tree search procedure. If you recall, in a binary search tree, to search for a value, we first compare the value we're searching for to the value of the root node. If the value is larger, we traverse to the right child, effectively cutting out all smaller values found in the left child. And if the value is smaller, we traverse down to the left child, cutting out all larger values. This process continues until we find a node containing either the requested value or we hit a leaf node, in which case we know the value is not in the tree. In a balanced binary search tree, the root node should be approximately in the middle of all the tree values if they were laid out in array in sorted order. So we're effectively performing the same comparisons as we would if we popped all the values off the binary search tree into a sorted array and ran binary search. This is the reason we see the same average time complexity across both the binary search as well as the binary search tree search function. The great thing about binary search is that we don't need to maintain the binary tree in memory to take advantage of its highly efficient search operation. Now that we've covered the basics, we'll move over to a coding editor and implement the binary search using Python. So now that we have our coding editor open, we'll first be implementing the algorithm inside of a function named binary search. The function will be passed two parameters. The first will signify the sorted array we wish to search through, and the second will be the integer target we're searching for. Inside the function, we'll first be checking to see if the array is empty, or if the array has a single element, but that element isn't what we're searching for. If either of these cases is true, we'll return false because we know that the target integer is not in the array. 
We'll then create a variable named mid to hold the value at the center of the array. Then break the execution into one of three cases. In the first case, if the middle value equals the value we're searching for, we'll return true because we've just found the value. If our target value is less than the middle value, we'll enter the second case and recursively call the binary search function, this time passing only the first half of the array as input. In the last case, if the target value is greater than the middle value, we'll do the same but pass the second half of the array as input. And that is the entirety of the binary search function. Take note though that even though we're implementing it for integers, you could easily modify the function to work with any other data type. If you wanted to change it to work with strings, for example, all you need to do is replace the comparators, so the greater than and less than signs, with custom comparison functions. We'll now switch over to terminal to run some test cases to ensure our function is working properly. We'll first need to import our binary search function. We'll then create a sorted array of length 9, containing the consecutive integers from 1 to 9. Searching for 0 using the binary search function, we can see we're correctly returned false, signifying that 0 is not found in the array. Searching for 1, 2, and 9, all actually in the array, we can see we're correctly returned true. And lastly, searching for 10, we can see we're correctly returned false again. That takes us to the end of this quick video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and can now implement binary search using Python. If so, hit that like button. Drop a comment if you have any questions or found any issues in the lesson. And I'll see you guys next time.